Alrighty guys, looks like we're live. It looks like it. Invite you to come join me. It is 26 minutes after 10 a.m. on this rainy Tuesday morning. It is the 18th day of February. 2020 I apologize for not being able to do our devotion yesterday um, I had it prepared to do but we just got really busy and um, just wasn't able to make time to um, do our devotion but we are here this morning we're going to take our scripture reading from Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 And we're going to title this devotion, The Choice to Rejoice. Do you know we have a choice whether we want to rejoice in the Lord or not? We have a choice whether we want to be happy or not. And we're going to explore that a little bit because I know that by saying that, you know, I get a lot of funny looks, you know, what are you talking about? You know, but... Let's, let's explore this some. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Paul simply said this. said, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. So at first glance, when we're looking at this verse of Scripture, you know, you may think, okay, well, it's easy. You know, Paul saying rejoice in the Lord always, and again I'm saying, you know, rejoice. You know, and so it's an easy scripture to read, and really you don't have to read between the lines on what Paul's trying to say. Paul's trying to say, rejoice in the Lord, always. And then he reiterates by saying, again, I say rejoice. And, you know, what Paul's intent was, and matter of fact, in this whole book of Philippians, you know, the theme is joy, having joy in the Lord. And, you know, Paul is encouraging the Christians to rejoice in the Lord, not sometimes, not when you feel like it, not when everything is going good, but Paul said rejoice in the Lord always. And that's where it gets a little difficult when you really want to think about it. You know, what do you mean rejoice in the Lord always? How can I rejoice in the Lord when things aren't going well in my life? First, let's define the word rejoice. The definition is simply this. Feel or show great joy or delight. So to rejoice is to feel and or show great joy or delight. So understand this. You know, Paul is not saying that we will never feel sadness or sorrow or depression. I mean, my goodness, we can go into the Word of God and some of the prominent writers and quote-unquote characters of the Bible, you know, had sadness and had sorrow. I mean, look at the book of Psalms, you know. There's a lot of Psalms that David had written, you know, that was shown a lot of sorrow and sadness. Um, you can go into, obviously, the book of Job and find a lot of sorrow and sadness. You, you can go into the book of Jeremiah and even, you know, part two of Jeremiah, I consider, which was the Lamentations, was written by Jeremiah, you know, the Lamentations. He was lamenting. He was sad. He was crying and sorrowful. They even called him, you know, the weeping prophet because he would be sorrowful over the sins of his people. And, you know, and many of writers in the Word of God, you can find sadness and sorrows. Jesus himself found sadness and found sorrow over the betrayal of, of, of people turning them away and rejecting him and all that. So Paul's not saying that, you know, just because he's saying rejoice in the Lord always, which means, you know, to have a, a, a joyful feeling, just because he says that doesn't mean that he's looking at us like we're not allowed to have the human um, emotions of sadness or sorrow, you know, in our life, because, you know, that's just part of life. 
We're going to have sadness. We're going to have sorrow. We're going to have disappointments and all. But the commandment that Paul was given to um, the church of Philippi, you know, in Greece, was rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You know, so Paul was just saying, you know, rejoice or, you know, have great joy and delight in the Lord. And again, I say have great joy and delight in the Lord. Always. Because regardless of your situation, regardless, regardless of our circumstances, you know, we have the choice whether to rejoice in the Lord or not. So here's what Paul was saying. He's like, it's not just primarily a matter of feeling. You know, we say to rejoice and, you know, um, we, we, we almost use that term as if it's a feeling that we have no control of. But it's more than just a feeling. Paul was taught writing to the church of um, Philippi and, you know, Philippians here, and he was pretty much commanding the church, you know, rejoice. You know, I'm, and I'll, I'll reiterate, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice he was saying listen make up your mind rejoice in the Lord regardless of circumstances regardless of sadness and sorrow and things that comes against you rejoice folks I want you to understand the rejoicing in the Lord is more than just a feeling more than just an um, an emotion you know that we don't have much control over you know because there's some emotions you know there's some feelings you know that we don't have much control over you know getting angry sometimes some people can control their temper some people can't control their temper you know um i you know whether you know it's anger or or some people can't you know control their sadness sometimes you know just watching situations in life people breaks down and cry you know there are emotions that we have that sometimes we can't control or always have control over. But rejoicing in the Lord is something that we have control over. We choose every day. We make a conscious decision every day if we want to rejoice in the Lord or no. So it's not just an emotion. It's not just a feeling. But it's a choice. You may say, I don't believe that. I disagree with that. Well, you know, listen, you can disagree with me all you want to. That doesn't make you right. Um, let me give you case in point. This very book of Philippians was written by the Apostle Paul. And his entire theme in this whole entire book is to have joy. And notice this. When Paul was writing about being joyful, when Paul was writing about rejoicing in the Lord always, do you realize Paul was in a prison while he was writing this? He's saying that he's blessed. He's saying that he rejoices. He's saying that he finds joy in the Lord. He's not, he's not finding joy sitting in a prison um, because of charges that that was false, that was trumped up against him. You know, he wasn't rejoicing because, oh, yay, I'm in shackles and I'm in a dungeon and, you know, I'm all that, you know, I'm in prison. I'm about ready to lose my life. You know, he wasn't rejoicing over that. But he said, regardless of what I am going through, I still choose to rejoice in the Lord. Not rejoice in the circumstances that he's in, but rejoice in God. Folks, listen, this will help us if we just latch on to it. Regardless of our circumstances, regardless of what we're facing, let us rejoice in the Lord. Let us choose to rejoice. Even when things are wrong. Even when things, even when you feel I had a uh, and have a neighbor, and he's very very big part of um, why I'm saved today. And brother Don Holt, and and love him and sister Ruby with all my heart and all my life, or basically all my life. And I'll say, hey, Don Holt, how you doing? He'll, and and jokingly he'll say, I'm sick, disgusted, and broke. And we get a laugh out of it. But you know, but I'm gonna say this: even if you feel like you're sick, disgusted, and broke, you know, rejoice in the Lord. This society, this world that we're living in, you know, it seems like it's not happy unless you're unhappy. It seems like it comes against you in every direction. 
And I'm not saying that we have to like and be happy with the circumstances that comes against us. But we still can rejoice in the Lord because He gives us grace. He gives us strength. I think another thing that Paul was reaching for when he said rejoice in the Lord is your attitude. Have an attitude of gratitude. Have an attitude, you know, that you're going to, you know, show gratitude to the Lord. You're going to thank God. You're going to appreciate Him. You're not going to take Him for granted, but you're going to appreciate His grace, His mercy, His love, His protection, you know, His provision, everything that we need. You know, why should we not rejoice in the Lord always? I find it sad when we can only rejoice in the Lord when things are going well, when things are going our way. And thinking about that, and, and I've seen so many people, as long as everything was going well, they were serving the Lord. They would rejoice, they would stand up and testify at church, and they'd sing hymns of praises to the Lord. But when things didn't go their way, when things didn't go right, their worship and their praise stopped. You know, my question is, is did we truly surrender to the Lord if we're so easily able to give up on God when things aren't going our way. And I've had conversations with people over the years. Why ain't you in church? Why ain't you worshiping? Why ain't you singing? Why ain't you testifying? Well, my bill didn't get paid, or this didn't happen, or that didn't happen. So, you know, I'm, they don't say it with their words, but their actions. They're saying, I'm mad at God. Listen. If the only time that you want to be my friend is when I'm giving you things, then you're truly not my friend. If you got people that's latching to you because you're always buying them dinner and you're always throwing money their way and all that stuff, you know, stop doing that for a minute. And see how close they are to you. Ask them for help. And see if they're willing to reciprocate. See if they're willing to give you help. Most of the time when you call out on friends for help, the only thing you see is dust and elbows where they're running from you. They want People want everything from you, but they don't want to give anything in return. That's not true friendship. That's not true love. Folks, if we come to God and worship Him and praise Him and everything just because things are going good, then... You know, and that, there's nothing wrong with that. We should thank God. We should praise God. We should rejoice in God for answering our prayer and being with us and giving us things that we truly don't deserve. But in the bad times, we should worship and rejoice in Him just as much as in the good times. So, saying all that, you know, serving the Lord, living for the Lord, is is a choice as well. It's not a feeling. You know, you don't get saved because of your feelings. You get saved because of a choice. You choose to repent of your sins. You choose to accept Christ as your Savior. Every single day that you wake up, you choose to live for the Lord. That's what he's telling. Rejoice every day. It's just rejoicing in the Lord isn't just an emotion or a feeling, but it's a choice. I mean, look at Paul's life. I could go on and on about everything that that man had gone through. You know, the shipwrecks and the whippings and the stonings and, you know, the imprisonments and, and all of these things, you know, the thorn in the flesh, that whatever it was that hindered him, you know, all these things that he had gone through. And through it all, he said, oh, I'm going to serve the Lord. I choose to rejoice in him. Folks, it's a conscious decision to rejoice and be happy and find delight in the Lord. Emotions change. Sometimes our emotions change several times a day. Our moods change. But us rejoicing in the Lord should never change. Scripture says that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. So today I want to encourage you Make that choice to rejoice in the Lord always, no matter how bad life seems to get us. 
Look in Philippians chapter 1, verse 18. Everything that Paul had gone through, all this suffering, all the things that Paul had gone through, and even sitting in prison while he was writing about joy in the book of Philippians, he said, in these things I will rejoice. I will rejoice. All these things that come against me, I'm still going to rejoice in the Lord. Because here's the, here's the kicker. Our circumstances should never determine whether we worship the Lord or not. Just to say, I'm going to worship the Lord when things are good and I'm going to turn away from God when... You know, listen, our salvation should not be hinged on our happiness. Our salvation should not be hinged on whether we got a job, whether we got bills you know, paid, whether we got food on the table, clothes on our back, roof over our head. You know, those are great things and the Bible promises... You know that you know he knows our need to go to Matthew chapter six and you see you know that he has he knows that we have need of these things and he says to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But the thing of it is, our salvation should be hinged on Jesus Christ, nothing else. Whether we lose our job today, whether you know this happens or that happens, we should never stop rejoicing in the Lord. And I think every one of us has fallen short on that one time or another. So, let me close with this. In John chapter 15, verse 11, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. How can we rejoice? How can we have re um, joy in the Lord? He fills us with his joy and he said not only did I give it to you but I wanted to remain in you wake up every day purposing in your heart that you have a choice to rejoice in the Lord I want to leave you with this poem um, Deborah Ann Belkin wrote um, been reading a lot of her poetry lately but this title of the poem is rejoice rejoice in the Lord and it simply says, Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Be glad and shout out with joy. For he will uplift you and your doubts he'll destroy. For those who trust in the Lord haven't anything to fear. Because they know to them he is always close and near. Rejoice all who love the Lord. With delight give him your praise. His power and strength is yours when the shield of faith you raise. Stand up against the wicked one. Don't believe in his lies. For God blesses all who trust with a heart that is wise. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Lift up your jubilant praise. Let God hear your joyous voice. Folks, listen. Today, exercise your choice to rejoice in the Lord. That's all i got for you today. Lord willing, we'll be back on tomorrow with another devotion. So you guys have a blessed day and rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. God bless you.